Now, oh, man, thanks for being here, everyone. It's great song quality. And uh, we've done these notes for you. So, has everyone got a folder? Yeah. If you haven't got a folder, there's still folders in it. You'll get more. You'll replenish the notes every time with plastic wallets so that it can be looked after. This is the Gospels. I mean, this is the Gospels in chronological order. But it's the Gospels, so we talked last week, you know, we didn't have a lot of time last week, so I just did a bit of a bit of a ramble, to be honest with you. Everything that we said last week will be covered again in much more detail, much more explicit detail. Everything will be backed up that we discussed last week. As we go through this ministry of Yeshua as the Lamb of God. Amen. The Lamb of God, we looked at it last week in 2 Corinthians when Paul says, Messiah was our Passover. He died as the Passover lamb. That's clear, it's, that's pretty basic, that Yeshua was the Passover lamb. When John the Baptist said, Behold the Lamb of God, he was talking Passover language. We've covered this in the Torah. If people are unfamiliar with this, you'll get used to these phrases or get used to this priesthood language. Because we seen, didn't we, when we do the Torah? And if we are a royal priesthood, we need to understand what priests do. And priest, the priesthood, the Aaronic priesthood, every morning, wasn't it? And every evening of every day of the year, there was a certain sacrifice that had to be brought, wasn't it? Every morning, every evening, what was it? A lamb, without spot and blemish, and it had to be a lamb of the first year. Every morning and every evening, this is. And this is taking us back to the Passover lamb. The Passover lamb is a lamb of the first year, without spot and blemish. And it should be part of our understanding as a priesthood. We should know so intimately this sacrifice of the lamb in the morning and the lamb in the evening. And then that's the ironic priesthood. No one suggests today that we kill lambs anymore. The lamb's been killed once for all. It's never going to die again. It doesn't need to die anymore. He's done it once for all. But now, as a priesthood, which we are, we are a royal priesthood. And that points us towards the Melchizedek, which we talk about a lot here. We'll talk about it even more now, because we're with the Melchizedek himself, Yeshua, the King of Righteousness. Well, that priesthood is slightly different, isn't it? And David seemed to have insight into this when he said in the Psalms, Psalm 141, is it? Let the lifting of my hands, this is what it says, and this is what Paul says in Timothy, I desire that men everywhere would lift up holy hands. It's a New Testament thing. Paul's saying it in the New Testament to get your hands up in the air. Well, what's he saying this for? Because King David said, let the lifting of my hands be like the Lord, even in the sacrifice. So what is the even the sacrifice? It's a lamb in the face here. Let the lifting of my hands be like that. Yeah, because this priesthood is all about a sacrifice of thanksgiving. You know, I remember what I do every day, every night. Myself, it's a lie integrity. I won't get out of bed until I've got my hands up in the air. And I am thanking you, Father, for the Lamb of God. The Lamb that was slain before the foundations of the world, it says. And he shows us in Ephesians chapter 1. He shows us in him. He destined us to be adopted. All because of the Lamb slain from before the foundations of the world. This is what this is about. So however you interact in this way, there's what the Bible says. Get your hands up in the air and thank him for the Lamb of God. That's why I was in the, in the system all that time. A lamb every morning, a lamb every evening. The lamb of God. And this is, behold the lamb. And you will behold the lamb as, as he walks through his ministry. And you know all about what I believe. I believe that this is a little over a year. And covered that a lot of that last week. The one thing I'll keep on saying, and I hope that people will really just go look at these things for themselves. That's what Bereans do, isn't it? Bereans mm. hear it, and then they go away and change it, right? And that's brilliant, because that's God's way of teaching you. You can hear it, you can hear YouTube, you can hear all kinds. If you go away and get your Bible and start searching it, 
then the Holy Spirit will be your teacher and he'll teach you and confirm to you these things so I just hope you'll study this and the backbone as I mentioned last week of the Gospels for me is where we're going to start tonight and we will start tonight is John the Gospel of John because the Gospel of John is set out and it's Jerusalem centric I always have to say 80% of John's Gospel is in Jerusalem at a feast and that's how he set the Gospel out he wants to show you the lamb over the course of the year going from feast to feast John 2 and 3 Passover John 5 is Pentecost John 7 is Tabernacles John 10 is Hanukkah and John 12 is the final Passover if you can allow yourself to see these things it's that clear it's that clear and I know there's people that don't see it like this and that's why there's so much more to do in the Gospels than banging on about a year we want to hear every word that he says, that Yeshua says. We want to observe every miracle that he does. Because every miracle's got so much meaning in it. And makes so much more sense when we see the timing of things and the, the whole backdrop to what he's doing. We want to see the miracles and go over and be blown away. We want to get on tour with Yeshua. That's what I said last week. This is being on tour with Yeshua. Being a witness of these things. The Holy Spirit can make this so real as if you were there. John, uh, general consensus is that John wrote his gospel in about the year, uh, or when he was about 80, I bet, when he was about 80 years of age, when he was in Ephesus towards the end of his life, this is when he wrote his gospel. And he was just going from memories, and the Holy Spirit held him to remember things and put them into context. Well, the Holy Spirit can do that with each one of us, so you can know and feel like, God, was I thinking about what? I don't half know this story so well. It's like one of the you know, one of my most vivid memories. Like I was walking with him. But well, that's how alive this can come. I believe that's the gospels have been put together. And now that we've got the chance to see it chronologically, you can really because I was saying to Vip before, it's the truth. And once you've got the truth, it's all like, like the Jesus of Nazareth films, it's all over the place. It just doesn't make sense. But this chronology makes sense, and the Holy Spirit can back it up and go, this is true. And you'll see, I don't have to leave it a point. <coughs> so that's a little, just a bit of an out, a bit of beginning. We're going to start properly tonight in John chapter 1. John chapter, chapter one. 1, you've got your notes here, you know, a little while, so you can take the pages out, make notes on them, I hope you will do, and put it back in your little plastic thing to keep it safe. We lose them, we can replace them. I hope and pray that this will take over some people's lives, took over my life, took over my life five years ago when I started to get into this. And I love it. I'm so privileged to be able to share this with you. So thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. We only want truth here. We only want truth. We want the whole truth and nothing but the truth. So, Father, sanctify us by the truth. Thank you for the Holy Spirit who will lead us and guide us into all truth. Thank you even when we don't all see the same way things that we still have a wonderful unity here. We have a unity here because we all love you and we all love each other. Because that's what this faith's about. So thanks Father for even in the midst of not agreeing on things we can love and have oneness. And teach us in that Lord how to just grow and develop. And all of us just to be drawn closer and closer to our yes. Messiah, yes. Yeshua. Thank you, Father. Amen. All right, so John chapter 1. And I'd recommend you have your Bible with you and have your notes with you and go away and pour into this. Remember what happened briefly, I mentioned again this last week, but what happened was when I come across this, I saw so and because I was a lot of people with the chronological Gospels that have been produced, I thought I need to write this out myself. So I typed it out myself, got it all crowded together, typed it all out. And then when I passed it to Lynn, first person to read it, she was reading it, she went, Are you sure this is the Bible? It's like, it's word for word, New King James. They went into tiny here and there with a bath, something back, it's clear that I've just added a little notes. But the rest of it is just pure, unadulterated New King James verses. But there's no verse numbers in it. So it reads like a book. 
And that's why you didn't know. You saw this in the Bible. It's weird for weird for the Bible. So, John chapter 1 in your Bible and in your notes. And this will get easier as we get along. Just trying to break through it for the moment. Trying to get it on the same page. If it goes over your head, don't worry and get, get in touch. You know, anything you want to discuss, please, this should come. Maybe the most important thing in your life. If that's not too strong a statement. Um, chapter 1 of John. John's got to chapter 1. We, talk, we, we started the talk about society again last week, and obviously it was Genesis chapter 1 last week, wasn't it? And you can see as you read now through the first, uh, we're going to read this first passage of today's 18. You can see as John's had all this time to think about how he's going to present the gospel, he's gone with, you know what? I'll just do it like Genesis 1. I'm going to put this gospel right up there in a, in a Hebrew mindset with creation. I'm going to put it on that level. It's not like the other Gospels introduce us to show it in different ways. John's just in there with probably the most profound language in the universe. Because this is how he starts. In the beginning, just like Genesis chapter 1, verse 1. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. And then it goes into the last gospel that happened. It was darkness covered the earth. And then God said, let there be light. That's why we were saying it before. But you can see now where John's getting this from. It's all going to be about in the beginning. And God is the creator. And God speaking light in the being. That's how John wants to introduce us to who he's talking about. He just wants to make it play from the beginning. This is a normal characteristic. This is, in fact, in the beginning was the word. In the beginning was the word. I mean, how you could use, could have started, anything you could have started off in here, but this is how John was being led by the Holy Spirit to introduce us to this. God of ours. In the beginning was the word. Does anyone keep that up from last week just to put out the Hebrew gospel? The gospel, try and keep all of them and bring them and put them in the folder and it's part of this course. The gospel that has come to us recently from John, what are the first 13 verses? And also Luke, first 30 on verses. If you've got them, keep them, or it's time to bring more, or if you've uploaded a link. Well, in Hebrew, this says, and I've got lost in the door myself, but I've had a look at these people there who are craving understanding of Hebrew. I know you love the Hebrew, but in Hebrew, this says, better sheets, better sheets in the beginning, just like Genesis. It says, Haya Hadaba. Haya Haya is was. You know, you see the last song. Haya, they go they, they are all. Who was, who is, who is to come. But it's Haya, was in the beginning. Haya Hadaba. Because you remember when we were doing Deuteronomy? Deuteronomy, and what was the real name of Deuteronomy? Devani. Devani. The words, the words. Well, that's the Dabar. Haya. Dabar. In the beginning was the Dabar. So, John is using the language, musically, to explain this is the word of God. This. So, before we go any further, let's just have a lovely little look at the Isaiah. Just about this in the beginning. Isaiah. Is it like a horror story? Psalm 33, I'm going to say. Psalm 33, I'm going to say. Psalm 33, anyone wants the notes that go along with this, like an email or notes, all I've done is put every verse and then put notes on every verse. So you can put the notes that I don't know today. Psalm 33, verse 6. And if we go through quickly, hopefully we are recording now and quickly we're going back over these things. And get every scripture. Because this is Psalm 33, verse 6. By the word of Yehovah, the heavens were made. How was the heavens made? By the word of Yehovah. All the host of them, by the breath of his mouth. He gathers the waters of the sea together as a heap. You know what? I'm going to carry on because you could just read the rest of that psalm 
and it's wonderful. I think we had it last week, to be honest with you, for this season. But it's clear there that it's by the word of Yehovah the heavens were made. Hebrews tells us this, doesn't it? That it's, it, this is, gives us faith, this, because it says, by faith we understand that the words, words were framed by his word. So we can accept that. That's going to help us in our faith. Because Hebrews says, by faith we understand this. So the more we can just accept, wow, we might have made this all our lives in the beginning was the way. It's like, really, that's some of the cause. This will really help our faith when we come to, to, to understand who this word is. So that's why I'm not rushing to do this. Like I said last week, we are in no rush here. Anyone who's impatient, you will learn patience. Because <laughs> I was one of them. I was one of them. Give me patience now. In the beginning was the word of like this. And the word was with God. And then in Hebrew and in Greek, in Hebrew it says, they ha Elohim who ha ha who ha ha so that the other way it was God and God he was the way it and in Greek it says the same Theos Eno Logos God he was the way it doesn't really make any difference I'm not trying to get all clever it just came more alive when I started to see it God he was the way it God is the way it and God is the way it if we love and as much as we think and say we do, then we should love the word because he is the word. Like we were saying before, George, a long time God confused the languages at Babel. That's this week's talking about, isn't it? Well, that's how important words are. We can all wear without words, you can all wear without communication, we able to speak to each other. Well, God's children to speak to us this way. It says in Hebrews chapter 1, look at this Hebrews chapter 1, verse 1. God, who at various times and various ways spoke in time past to the fathers by the prophets, has in these last days spoken to us by his Son, who he has appointed heir of all things, through whom also he made the wills, who being the brightness of his glory and the express image of his person, and upholding all things by the weight of his power, when he by himself pays our sins, he, this is why we all felt he's at so much here, he sat, sat down, down at the right, right hand, hand of the majesty on high. That's Psalm 110 languages. Psalm 110 languages sit at my right hand. You are a priest forever, according to the order of Melchizedek. And this is what it says once you sure that on that work of paying our sins, he sat down and rested. And that's what the Sabbath message is all about. Enter this rest. Enter into this finished way. Understand that God has set a day aside, one day in a week, when we are to rest and sit down and know it's finished. And that will affect our lives for the rest of the week. It's just a wonderful system God put in place. So the way it was, God, it is to He was in the beginning with God. Wow. Let's just go to a Proverbs chapter 8. And I'm doing this on purpose, just load you with scriptures so that you can make sense of this when you go into your Berean thing later on and check it out. But just to understand this in the beginning, what's this in the beginning about? Well, there it is. Chap chapter 8 of Proverbs is a great chapter. Eh? And it's about wisdom. This is about wisdom. We need to have wisdom. Amen. If you want to be a wise virgin, you know there are five wise virgins. Guess what you need? Wisdom. <laughs> wisdom makes you wise. So we need to be, it says in Proverbs, say to wisdom, you are my sister. It's a peculiar thing to do, but just do it. The Bible says do it. So say, communicate, say to wisdom, you are my sister. Say to understanding, you are my nearest kid. This is the relationship we need to have here. So, Proverbs chapter 8, this is the insight into the beginning. Verse 22, talking about wisdom. Yehovah possessed me at the beginning of his way. Before his way is old, I have been established from everlasting. From the beginning, this is the beginning, 
before there was ever an earth. <laughs> before there was an ever, ever an earth. That's in the beginning. Amen. In the beginning is when there was an earth. It tells you again, from the beginning, before there was ever an earth. Well, what happens at the very beginning? We want to say it. The Lamb of God was slain before the foundations of the world. God had this boxed off before he created it. The Lamb of God was slain from before the foundations of the world. God knew everything that was going to happen. It's so shy like this. Just got to accept the awesome simplicity of what it says. In, In the, the beginning. beginning. So carry on. Verse 23, right? from the beginning, before there was ever an earth, when there were no depths, when there was no depths, I was brought forth. When there were no fountains abound with water, before the mountains were settled, before the hills, I was brought forth. Why was yet he had not made the earth, or the fields, or the primal dust of the world? It's a boss like scientific phrase, isn't it? And it's all them scientific heads with that. Before the primal dust of the world, before all that, wisdom was there. When he prepared the heavens, I was there. When he threw a sail on the face of the deep, when he established the clouds above, when he strengthened the fountains, the fountains of the deep, when he assigned to the sea its living, so that the waters will not transgress his commands. Wow! How control is he? in control, is he? Yes! It's why I would say this, because this is giving you insights. What was up in the beginning? What? Yeah. This is that. You've got to read it this way. <coughs> when he marked out the foundations of the earth, then I was beside him as a master craftsman. And I was daily his delights, rejoicing always before him, rejoicing in his, in his, in his inhabited world. And my delight was with the sons of men. That's how much God loves us. Amen. Now, therefore, cause that, listen to me, my children. For blessed are those who keep my ways. Hear instruction and be wise and don't disdain it. Blessed is the man who listens to me. Wow. Watching daily at my gates, waiting at the posts of my doors. For whoever finds me, finds life. And obtains favor from Yahovah. But he who sins against me wrongs his own soul. All those who hate me love death. There's a lovely word on the beginning, isn't it? I mean, <laughs> you know, and I mean, so let's get back to John. Back to, you know, back to John chapter 1. I'm just trying to pad this out with a bit of, you know, a bit of understanding. The only way to understand the Bible is let the Bible translate the Bible. So he was in the beginning with God. That'll do for the beginning of this. It says, it says <coughs> all things were made through him. We just read a bit of that in the And without him, nothing was made that was made. Just absorb this. Nothing was made that was made without him. He made everything. Let me just back it up with Colossians chapter 1. Can't be wrong by just quoting the scriptures. Colossians chapter 1, verse 16. Hallelujah, Lord. From the beginning, you chose us. <laughs> you chose us from the beginning. There's so much security in this, isn't it? God, it makes you to understand God loves us. Verse 16 of Colossians chapter 1. For by him, all the Lord is sure. Says in verse 15, he is the image of the invisible God. He's the image of the invisible God. And the face born over all creation. For by him, all things were created that are in heaven and that are on earth. Visible and invisible. It says this again, Hebrews made what well, uh, can be seen and what can be seen. This is do us the word of God just to accept who he is, the creator. The creator. That's why the Sabbath's so important, you know, to our faith, because it's all on Sabbath. So remember that in six days he made the world and then he rested on the Sabbath. 
And it's an abandonment, abandonment of the Sabbath, which has led to a loss of understanding of our Creator and, 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 and allowing these nonsense uh, people to teach us of, you know, that we came from fish and big bangs and all of the nonsense that we've been told in the last few centuries. This is all because people have stopped keeping God's covenant. And this is exactly what Romans chapter 1 says. You want to know why what we saw about before, why there's so much not like you said, I'm not going to call it a game. Let's call it what it is. Sin and abomination is going on. Why? No one tells you. Because they stopped worshipping the creator, started worshipping creative things. Start doing that, you get out of the way. You start doing that as a nation, you get out of the way. Start doing that as a nation, you be having fellas getting sued for not making cakes. This is the laws now, isn't it? You know, the laws of the land are equal rights. This is on the radio today. And so when you see on the news some grotesque God help them, man claims to be a woman. who got locked up in a prison, a woman's prison, because he said he was a woman when he was a man. I started to solve the women in the women's prison. It's like, I don't blame him. I blame them. I blame the authorities. But this is what happens when you get handed over because you stop to worship the creator himself. And the Sabbath is a big part of keeping that perspective of the creator. The creator gave us these commandments. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. I hope so. So, so to finish that off, Colossians. Colossians 4 by him. I, yeah. Whether thrones or dominions or principalities or powers, all things were created through him and for him. That includes us. Our lives are at all. We've been born with a price and made up. Made up. He's just purchased us with his own blood. And our lives are at all anymore. But the more we start to understand that, the freer we really will be. This is real freedom. Real freedom is serving and worshiping God. That's real freedom. It really is. Nothing was made without him. All things were made by him and through him. Verse 4. In him was life. And the life was the light of men. And that's why we've been saying it tonight. Shine, Jesus, shine. Amen. Shine, Jesus, shine. Fill this land with the Father's glory. Ah, oh, man, what a song. Because it's all what it's about. In him was life. And that life was the light of men. And that's why I was saying at the start, John has got Genesis 1 in mind again. In the beginning, it was full of darkness and void, and God said, Let there be light, and it was light. Well, that was day one. Then we've got to read Genesis chapter 1 to realize that's not the sun and the moon he's talking about there. They don't get me until day four, do they? It's day four. He says, Ah, oh, let's make the sun and the moon and the stars. Well, what's this chapter over here? It's one light then. There it is. It's your shiver. It's your shiver. Shine, your shiver, shine. And that's what's saying here, John wants us to understand. You know, this beginner language, this light, this isn't natural light. This is supernatural light. You should have said, I am the light of the world. I am the light of the world. It's all in Genesis chapter 1 language. When God said, Let there be light, this is your shiver it's talking about. It's great because look, wow. I know, in him was life, and the life was the light of God. It's what we do every Sabbath, isn't it? It's all about every Sabbath. Remember, I brought you out of Egypt. It's something God's put in position in, in His Word. I want you as my people. It's going to help you so much if you will remember every Sabbath the, what I did for you, that I brought you out of Egypt. Well, now we understand all of that. was a shadow, wasn't it? All of these things are shadows. Messiah is the substance that says in Colossians chapter 2 verse 17 that all these Sabbaths and feasts are shadow pictures of the Messiah. So that shadow picture that we being brought out of Egypt is a picture of us being brought out of darkness and being brought into his marvellous light. We are a royal people, a holy generation, a holy nation that we shall proclaim forth the marvellous way uh, of the world of him who has called us out of darkness into his marvellous light. It's so simple, 
to just juxtapose these things, darkness, light, life, death, you know, that's what this language is he's talking about. We are in the light now, are we? He's brought us out of darkness. We were in darkness. We were separate from God. We were even enemies, it says. And he has drawn us by his spirit and brought us into light. I love it so much. It's, it's so, so wonderful. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. It says in Proverbs chapter 20, verse 7, the spirit of man is the candle of Yehovah. This is where he puts his light in our spirit. Oh, I just can't get this. It doesn't get it at all. But our spirits, that's, they get it. Revelation. Revelation. Light. Let there be light. Let there be light in us. Let there be understanding of spiritual things in us. Because it's so important. You know, I'm going all over the place, but this is the board for those who haven't studied with us on these things. Second, they've started to be Thessalonians. Don't worry if you don't want to keep up with the flicker. Do it later when you watch it. First Thessalonians chapter 5. First Thessalonians chapter 5 talking about this life that has brought light. Considering the times, first, excuse me, Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 1. Considering the times and seasons. What's that talking about? It's not talking about spring, being set, summer and autumn. It's talking about God's holy appointments. The Moedim in Hebrew. Pointed times, feasts, Sabbaths. Considering the times and seasons, brethren, you have no need that I should write to you. Why? Because you yourselves ought to know perfectly that the day of the Lord so comes. What like a thief in the night? That's scary, isn't it? The day of the Lord is going to come like a thief in the night. But when they say, whoever they are, because they're carrying on themselves all the time, aren't they, these peace things? When they say, and you hear it more and more now, more and more, Israel dwelling in peaceful, secure borders. Peace and security. When you hear all that peace and safety, then sudden, sudden destruction comes on them as neighbor pains upon a pregnant woman. And they shall not escape. That's how it right. They won't escape. That's what it says. But here's the good news, brethren. But you, brethren, are not in darkness. So that, that day should overtake you as a thief. No. You are all sons of light. And sons of the dead. We are not of the night, nor of the darkness. So come on, let's not sleep as others, but let's watch and be so Those who sleep, sleep at night. And those who get sunk, let's all get nice. I used to be in the middle of the day, a few years ago. Thank God for delivering me. I mean, I mean, save me, save me from destruction. Thank you, because I was a son of light. You know, even if you fall, he gets you up again. So, come on. Ah, my nice George. Let those who are at the day be so, put on the best place of faith and love. And as hell as the hope of salvation. I mean, I can't do a message without getting a bit end time, you know what I mean? Oh, he's coming back soon. Because it's a I know George, my heart, but you know what? I've got to put it on here. Come on, Dear Matt, dear Matt, it's going to take down like a thief and a righteous, but it's not going to go into the grave because your soul's are light. And where's this light come from? You share. He is the light of the world. But he even said to the disciples in the same on the to me, in Matthew, he said, You are the light of the world, I said to the disciples, therefore, so shine your light so that your good deeds are seen and you give glory to your Father. Yeah, yeah we are the light of the world as well. He's the light. Like the source of you. Yeah, 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 like the source of you. Yeah. Amen. Because that's what it comes to you now, what it says next. Put it into the beast, it's a base fire above you. Because the light shines in the darkness. But the darkness did not comprehend it or overpower it. The darkness couldn't deal with it. That's the way it was just one saying that light off now. It'd be dead dark and it was. And it was all going, 
if you're scared. Oh, it's starting, I'm scared. But all that see is for someone to turn out on. And that's it, see your darkness. God, see ya. The darkness can't fight it. The darkness really isn't anything, it's an absence. Awesome. Yeah, it's got no power to go. You turn the lights out on. What happened to the darkness? It's gone. See ya. That's how powerful this light is. It's a light. Yeah. The, and that's what he's saying. The light shines in the darkness. And if we don't do what he says, it will be light. If we walk like sons of light, people will see the light. You can't avoid it. It's the light. He's the light of the world. And he's us. And that's what we had before from Proverbs. It's in our spirit. It's the spirit of man. That's the candle of yard. That's where this business goes on. Beautiful. But the sad news is, 2 Corinthians chapter 4, this is the sad news. This is the sad news. That's why we've got to start waking up, like you said in Thessalonians, start praying. Oh, Father, pour on your spirit of grace and supplication upon us. Oh, let us pray like never before in the days we're in right now. It's really time to really come on, come on. Let's do what he's put us on this planet for at this time. What an opportunity we have got to save our king. Amen. Oh, these end days are not. But that I guess the light of the light is going to be seen. Because this is what it says. We've done some great studies over the years into this passage here. Second Corinthians chapters 3 and 4. When Paul's comparing the old covenant with the glory of the new covenant. It's wonderful. I'll just have to read this. Second Corinthians chapter 4. Uh, where should we start? Look, verse 3. But even if our gospel is veiled, it's veiled to those who are perishing, whose minds, look at this, the God of this age has blinded, who did not believe, lest the light of the gospel of the glory of Messiah, who is the image of God, should shine on them. The gospel brings forth light, but some don't receive it. Sad, sad, yeah. but thank God we have. Thank God we have, because anyone who's not saved, it's telling you there why the God of this age has blinded the minds of the unbelievers through many ways, like we mentioned, through these stupid evolution things and all kinds of things. He's blinded the minds, but let's have one more mighty outpouring of the Spirit and a light shining in the darkness. This is what Paul says in Philippians. See us shine like stars in the midst of a crooked and perverse generation. Shine like stars. It's the first time I hear God speak to me. I remember you, the pastor, you say, you can't hear God. I'm like, I don't know, can hear his voice? And you know, you help me to go, oh, you can hear his voice. And I remember, I couldn't hear him. It's like, I talk with these people, I say, you can hear God, I can't hear him. And I was sitting on my doorstep one night when I first got saved, or for the barren year, and I was looking at a beautiful starry night, and I heard God in my heart go, that's what you're like now. You used to be part of that blackness. Now, you're like a star that shines. And I had met for the feelings, and I was like, well, was that you, God? <laughs> was that you? You had to show me if that was you. And at that somehow, that night, I went to the Philippians and read that, shine like stars. God, I his voice now. Hallelujah! I hear his voice. Hallelujah! We are to shine like stars. Because the star is a light shining in the darkness. Yes! It is! Oh! He is the main light. He's the light. You know what I'm saying? It's only because he's in us. And we can see. Oh, yeah. We're in on this. We can shine as well. Only because it's him. It's only his light. It's like the moon doesn't shine. It just reflects the light. Well, that's us, Ian. We just, it's his light. It's his light. He is the light of the world. To be finished that off, we're getting everywhere. Yeah. <laughs> to be finished that off. Well, let's just finish it off. In 2 Corinthians 4, carry on. For we don't face five, we don't preach ourselves. But Messiah, Yeshua, the Lord, and ourselves, your bond servants for Yeshua. See, for this is it. This is going back to Genesis 1. And so on. For this is the God who commands the light. To shine out of darkness. What's he done? The same God who said, Let there be light, and there was light. The same God has shone in our hearts. Oh, 
to give their light. Yeah, they to see. This is how the gospel works. It shines in our hearts to give the light of the knowledge of the glory of God in the face of Yeshua the Messiah. This is why John is saying it in faith, John. We held him. We gazed upon him. We actually touched him and knew him on ground. Oh, oh. He dwells in us now. He dwells in us. This is the mystery he reveals. Messiah in us. That hope of glory. It's so wonderful, isn't it? Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Does anyone want to get a real answer? Yeah. <laughs> Oh, Alright, carry on. It's been like going everywhere. Verse 6, we're up to. Oh, yeah. Well, let's cover that bit. That's the opening five verses of John. First five verses has set out who we're talking about here. The word, basically, is God. God's manifestation to this world is through His word. And that's how we mention this many, many, many times here. Because we always do revelation here. But well, Revelation chapter 19, <coughs> just and obviously Revelation written by the same man, isn't it? Because the man wrote the gospel of John, it's called John, and he wrote Revelation as well. So it's the same man, he knows what he's on about. Revelation chapter 19, verse 11, just read this because it says, Blessed are those who read aloud and those who hear the words of this week. Now I saw heaven opened, and behold, a white horse, and he who sat on him was called Faithful and True. And in righteousness, he judges and makes war. See who he is? His eyes were like a flame of fire. And on his head were many crowns. He had a name in that no one knew except himself. He was clothed with a robe dipped in blood. And his name is called the Word of God. That's who we're talking about here. The Word of God. So let's move on now to the next phase, if you like, in this. It's verse 6. Now he's going to introduce us to another character. Verse 6. There was a man sent from God. So this man has been sent from God. It's the word. Say word for apostle. Well, it's, it is the word apostle in Greek. That's what he's saying. He's being apostles from God. Sent an apostle to set one. And this Yochanan, sorry, John, <laughs> is, uh, is sent from God. He's been sent from God, and his name, the first time I this, I nearly threw a span in the way, because I was laughing at all. His name was John. His name was John. Name was John. Now, Jess's dad's called John, isn't he? And John's a great name. And your husband's called John, but it's the same guy. <laughs> God bless him. I mean, God bless him. You know, it's the last thing in the world. I'm going to start fucking size and that. What a wonderful name. Because <laughs> when we do it, the spell of how it's and John. Oh, 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 oh. Because what I'm saying is, his name wasn't John, was it? I mean, come on, let's get back into the Hebrew sketch 2,000 years ago. It wasn't John. You're no, John. It's a great name. Great name. Fantastic name. But his name is not John. His name is Yohanan. I'm not saying this to be clever. It doesn't mean, no. It's not even clever, is it? I'm just, I'm just saying this because there's real meaning in the names. You know, I'm not sure what John means, you know, but I know what Yochanan means, and I'm going to explain what Yochanan means. Yochanan is his real name, Yochanan, Yochanan, Yochanan. It's not like most Hebrew, they've always got something to do with God, El or Yah, and that's what Yochanan means. Yah, Yehovah, is Hanan, and that's what that means. Gracious. Ken is grace. Hanan, graciousness. So this guy is not called John. His name's Yochanan, and that means Yahovah is gracious. And then we'll get into John's life next week. We'll start, you know, we've got to get John conceived and born, and sure we've got to get conceived and born. And that'll be the next two or three weeks. We'll be going through all that. We'll be going through all that. But it adds something when you understand what his man and dad, his name were. Or mother and father, for those that don't speak Scouts. <laughs> <laughs> His mother and father's name add to this majesty. What was his mother? What was his father's name? Zechariah. Zech well, yeah, that's Zechariah. Zechariah. What does that mean? 
Aha. Yes, so you Zakaria, Zikron is a memory. Zikron is the key for the memorial. Zakaria means, yeah, remembers. That's great to know, isn't it? You know, because we need to know that. Because God, yeah, made all the promises, didn't he? In what we call the Old Testament. You know, he promised, I'm going to do this. I'm going to send the deliverer. I'm going to bring it out. He promised and he promises. And thank God, he's not stupid and forgets. It's <laughs> all good if he's going to forget. I'm going to do your list, I'll do that for you. Oh, sorry, I forgot. Well, I have thanks very much. But this one remembers. Yah remembers. That's the father of John the Baptist, Zechariah. Yeah. And what's his mother's name? He wasn't. He wasn't. He That's it. I mean, Elizabeth's the many Elizabeth's here. Great name. Yeah. You know what I mean? But it wasn't. But it's not Elizabeth, it's Eli Shiva. And what's Eli Shiva mean? Well, you know what Eli means, don't you? Because you should have died on the cross. Eli, my God, my God. So what's Eli Shiva mean? My God has sworn. Like Bat Shiva, Beer Shiva, well of the oath, daughter of the oath. So Eli Shiva and what a couple, you know, what a couple. My God is so, and Yah remembers. So basically, Yah remembers that he made a promise somewhere along the line. And look, what they bring forth, Yah, Hova, is his fall of grace. What a family this is. And this is me even the Messiah. This is just his mates who was going before him. Well, that's how, we're not trying to be clever here without yet being released. He means so much. And we'll discuss that more next week. So this fella, this man, this man sent from God like an apostle. His name is Yohanan. This man came for a witness, to be a witness of the light. That all through him I believe. What a mission. Well, guess what? That's our mission as well. Right. In fact, this is many, many strange teachings on this. Many people just get this totally wrong. Oh, oh. Of those born of women, there's no greater than John the Baptist. Yeah. And those who are least in the kings are greater than John the Baptist. Well, that's not what it says. I mean, that's just what, what it says. I mean, just read it. I mean, let's do it. Let's read it ourselves. Luke chapter 7. Let's see what it actually says. Luke chapter 7. Don't we'll see. Of those born of women, there's no greater than John the Baptist. It says in Luke chapter 7, verse 28. For I say to you, among those born of women, there is not a greater prophet. Yeah. It doesn't mean anyone else has put their hands up and go, oh, Jesus, you're greater than John the Baptist. Come on. Come on. Right. John the Baptist was filled in his mother's womb with the Holy Spirit. He's the messenger of the Lord. You know, just because you, you've had the decency to go, eh, eh, I'd like to read it to the Lord. Oh, you're greater than John the Baptist now. It's not what it says. It says, amongst those born of women, there's no greater prophet than John the Baptist. Yahweh. But it says this, it does say this, but he who is least in the kingdom of God, what? He who is least. Prophets were talking about in here. The most least prophets in the kingdom of God, greater than Yahweh. And why? Because we've got a greater revelation than Yahweh. Yes. Yahweh didn't get it all. Yahweh wasn't quite sure, was he? Like, he wasn't born again. Yochanan didn't see the death of Messiah and the resurrection. We got a greater testimony than Yochanan the Baptist. We can tell people he died for it. He rose again for it. He's seated in heaven right now. It's a greater prophetic message we've got. We're not greater than Yochanan the Baptist. Unless you want to believe that. And, and, you know, <laughs> don't let me waste your ball. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I understand is a well okay. So this man came for the witness. Lord I have to say is, is that how much what, what a great witness we've got. This man was a witness to be a witness of the light and so we know and we've got a greater message than not from the Baptist. We can tell people this is finished. He has done it. He is seated now, sitting down at the right hand of God because he's done the way. He's John said, the old Lamb of God who takes away the sins of the world, you can say it's done. It's finished, it's done, done. It's happy days. Amen. It's the good news. Yeah. So this man came for the witness. And we'll see as we get very soon in the next, when we start getting going in Yochanan's ministry, 
His witness is so clear. It's so crystal clear because <laughs> it says he sent, he sent the Pharisees, sent men to Yohanan, to, Yohanan, to John, to go and ask him what he was. And Yohanan told him clearly, he's like, look, not, not, no, not me, I'm not the Messiah, no, 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 I'm just a witness. And then he says, so clearly, as we all read, word for word soon, he told me, he said, this is my testament. He sent me to the, into the wilderness to prepare the way. And he said, you know the one that you see, the spirit, the spirit like a dog lying on him? Well, that's the one. And he said, I saw. I saw the spirit land on him like a dog. I heard the voice of heaven say, this is my beloved son. And I'm here to tell you, this is my beloved son of Baptist. This is the son of God. And that's why John came to Shire to us as a sin. He often refers back to Jochen and doesn't he? he? often refers back to John. And he says at the end when they're about to kill him, they ask him a question, what gives you the right to do this? And Yeshua says, well yeah, I'll answer that if you answer this. You tell me, was Jochen and Baptist from God or from men? Answer me that and I'll tell you why one or two I do this. And again, because he said if we say that it wasn't God, he'll kill us because we think he's a prophet. And we don't know if that was God because why? why? Because we don't we had John's testimony about a year ago, only about a year ago, when we asked who this what's going on? And he said back with he said, Well, oh, it's not me, but the one who I saw the spirit of and I am telling you, this is my witness, that's the son of God. They had no excuse. They had a witness sent to them. Amen. This very special character Amen. was sent to tell the truth. And his witness is so clear. He sure is the Son of God. Amen. It's the easiest thing you can do that. Let's do it. <laughs> his witness is very clear. Here it says, he wasn't the light. In all case, we get a bit carried away here. He was not the light. But he was sent to be a witness of that light. That was the true light. Which gives light oh, come on, to every man coming into the world. It's beautiful. I don't know whether you can see it. I have checked it out on YouTube or what I did about it. I thought, I want to see it. This is true. So I found that uh, you can see it. Videos of it. That now it's been recently that you found it scientifically. But when a, a, a sperm enters an egg, there's a big flash of light. Yeah, it's beautiful. It's like it's this language. It's his life, and life is light. And now, when, when a human being is created, that's light. That's uh, until we come to light. Excuse the pun. In the last few years, so this man was not the light, but was sent to be a witness to light. That was the true light. It gives light to every man coming in the world. Let me just. I love this verse. Let me just quote this. Isaiah chapter forty-nine. But I know we're not sure yet, we're going to finish on time. Might even finish early in case you want to do a question, Sam. <laughs> <laughs> no, but I want to really get a bit of this, you know, and spend time with it. And some of the way that's getting to clear to you is the prophetic way that's so powerful. Isaiah 49 is a powerful chapter. The, 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 the message, the type in the New King James Bible, I've got says, the serpent, the light. You too. Gentiles. This was not felt with a lot of these people who were there into the Hebrew roots. And like, oh, we're all the time, we're all the time. Just read what the Bible says. Chapter 49, uh, chapter 49 of Isaiah, let's just go from verse 5. But well, really, and we'll do this more as we go on. We'll spend more time reading all of the prophets and the chapters. So if you want to make a little note to read, or this chapter yourself. Yeah, do you the way as it goes. Chapter 49, verse 5. Now, Jehovah says, who formed me, Catholic, let him lie by talking about the Messiah, who formed me from the womb to be his sins, to be Jacob, Yaakov, back to him. Wow. So that Israel is gathered to him. For I shall be glorious in the eyes of Jehovah, and my God shall be my strength. Indeed, the Lord says, indeed, he says, it, well, it's too small a thing that you should be my servant to raise up the tribes of Yaakov, Jacob. That's too small a thing. 
and to restore the preserved ones of Israel. This is talking about the whole house of Israel, isn't it? It's too small a thing that I'm sent to you just to bring them back. No. But I will also give you as a light to the nations, the Gentiles, that you should be my salvation. Is Yeshua a Hebrew? You should be my salvation where to the ends of the earth. Thus says Yehovah, the Redeemer of Israel, the Holy One. <laughs> Language. It's just great, that's what this language is. You sure there's that light, not just for the Jewish people, not just for the tribes of Israel, for the whole world Amen. to the ends of the earth. It's too small a thing that it is just made to see God and Israel. This is for the Gentiles as well. Amen. Amen. To reclaim humanity. Yeah, George, that's what he's going for. We read that in the wisdom of the Proverbs, the sons of men is the light. It's hard to comprehend, but I am learning and from experience knowing. If you don't understand everything, just absorb what the word says. Let the word change you. Don't change the word. Let the word change you. Just don't accept and receive these things. You know, you go over to a few verses there. Pull your mouth. Take a minute. So I'll just see you like verse 10. Verse 10. Oh, you know what? I'm just, I like this little note to put in here. Psalm 19 is a lovely little message. Because this is all about he gave light to all the kings of the world. Gave everyone life, didn't he? Now, with that life, we need to make a decision to get born again. Don't we? Like you always say, what is it, George? Born once, die twice. Born twice, die once. Born twice, die once. That's right. Born twice, die once. Like that, George. Psalm 19 is a great psalm and it talks about the Messiah as the bridegroom and it says in verse 5, verse 4, Psalm 19, verse 4, in them he has set the tabernacle for the soul, the soul which is like the bridegroom coming out of his chamber and rejoices like a strong man to run its race. It's rising, it's from one end of heaven and it's safe to the other end. And there is nothing hidden from its heat. And that's talking. Bridegroom, it's time to say, well, try and understand the Messiah, the bridegroom, like the sun. Everything is affected by its heat. And that's exactly the way it is with this. That's why there's no excuse, probably no excuses in that day for those who reject the Messiah. Not at all. Not at all. We, everyone has been had the chance to respond to this light. I just want to give people a really great chance in this city to really hear it again. Amen. So, Amen. Verse 10. He was in the world, and the world was made through him, and the world did not know him. The world was made through him, and the world did not know him. Well, the world, we've seen that, those, the world, the, the, the devil is blind at the minds of the unbeliever. But look at this next verse, in, in verse 11. I love this in the Hebrew. In the Hebrew it says, he came to his own homeland, and his the sons, when I have it, the sons of his own house, it says in Hebrew. He came to his own homeland, and the sons of his own house did not receive him. Difference here. The world didn't know him, but his own house should have known him. Yes, yes. I mean, he said this in John 5, didn't he? He said, Look, no, you, you search the scriptures to think you'll find life in them. They speak of me. Right. But if you don't believe what Moses wrote, right. how are you going to believe what I say? Right. So you can see, he didn't really believe. It was just the latest games getting played in the majority of people, wasn't it? And that's what it's saying. The world didn't know him. But his own house, his own the son of his own house didn't receive him. They didn't open up to him. Left him standing outside knocking. You know what I'm saying? There's a difference there between knowing him and receiving him. But the good news is, verse 12. But as many as received him, to them he gave the right mindset or the authority. The power, it says, 
to become children of God. So to those who believe in his name. We will just finish this verse. Who were born not of blood, nor of the will of the flesh, nor of the will of man, but of God. Amen. And that's what he says, goes into this new birth. He shows clear in John 8. He says to the Jews that are kicking off with him, he says, look, you might be able to have descendants. You might have some birth certificate, DNA thing, saying that you're able to have descendants. All right, sad, but you're not as children. That's what he says to the Jews. You might be his descendants, but you're not his children. If that's one descendant of your children, you are. You're the sons of your father, the devil. And that's what this is saying. This bear, this, this cannot be born, being born of blood. You don't inherit salvation by getting born. You don't go, oh, I come from there. I come from a Jewish family. I'm saved. I know. That's not the way this works. His own didn't receive him. But to those who did receive him, he gave the authority to be called sons of God. And the gift of righteousness? Yes, it is. It's a gift. That's what this is all going to go into. And I'm not going to crack on much more now because it's too much to squeeze in here. So let me just find a place to wrap up here. <coughs> and probably the best place to wrap up on that will be Galatians 4. Galatians 4, just to finish off. I mean, if you want a lot of time to discuss more questions, you can do that. But I'm going to finish five to ten minutes early with this. We've probably gone over, over now. I'm going to finish it. But we're going to read this just to wrap that up. And we'll get back into it next week. We're in no rush here. We're in no rush. There's no rush at all. So we're talking now. As many as received him, he gave the right to become. Don't take this for granted. Children of God. He said to the Jews, you're all the sons of your father, the devil. And that's everyone. We were all born in sin, really. That's why you've got to be born again. It's so clear the message. You've got to be born again. It's no good getting born of the will of man or the will of flesh. That's not going to do you any good at all. You've got to get born from above. You've got to be born of the Spirit. You've got to be born again. And so Galatians chapter 4, verse 26. I go down here. Hallelujah, Lord. Oh, I've opened up. This is Galatians chapter 3. Yeah, Galatians chapter 3, sorry. Galatians chapter 3, verse 26. For you are all sons of God through faith in the Messiah, Yeshua. That's simple, isn't it? Yeah. You're sons of God through faith yeah. in the Messiah, Yeshua. Yeah. Ephesians chapter 2, verse 8. For by grace we are saved, not by works. Yet by grace you are saved through faith, not by works, not by works, and no one can boast. This is a free gift, as many as receive him, receive the free gift. As many as say, thank you, Lord, thank you for that free gift. I'm not going to try in this. That's the Sabbath message. Don't work on the Sabbath, because you can't work to get this. You can't work to earn this. Don't buy and sell on the Sabbath because you can't buy and sell this. It's not for sale, it's free. And the Sabbath message is the gospel message. It's free. Free. So, you're all sons of God through faith in the Messiah, you share. As many of you as were baptized, amazed into the Messiah, have put on the Messiah. There is neither Jew nor Greek, neither slave nor free neither male nor female, for you are all one in Messiah Yeshua. And if you are Messiah, it's like everyone saying, Amen. Oh, yes, I don't want to get in on that. Oh, yes, sir. Oh, you think, baby? Well, if you are Messiah, then guess what else you are? Abraham's seed. Yes. Huh. Well, that's not what I'm saying. It's not what I'm saying. It's not what i If you're the Messiah, then you're Abraham's seed. And is called to the promise. Amen. Chapter 4, verse 6. And because you are sons, because you're sons, guess what? God has sent forth the Spirit into your hearts, crying out. This, I love this. It's the simplest, easiest thing in the world to do. And I think it's far up there, you know, on spiritual things. I think it's right up there. All you've got to do is cry, Abba. 
Because it's testifying to this, the Spirit in your heart, what you want to walk, you're slapping, you go, Amen! And the more you do it, the more you resent. Because you've got to come to God like little children. Yeah, like, Amen. Like Dad, Father, Father. Yeah, yeah, Amen. Amen. Dad, Dad, Dad. You know, you know, Israel, and see that little, little tiny girl jumping into the pool, going, Amen, the way you shout, what's me? Amen. I was like, that's when I first, wow. Okay, years ago. But like, that's what he's saying, because we're sons of God, we sent forth the Spirit into your hearts, crying out, Amen, Daddy. That's what you've got to do. Because he said, except you become a little children, you cannot right. um, And that's what he's saying. We've got to walk now, play into our games. We've got to understand. He is a, and how have we become, this is the final word now, how have we become children? Through adoption, isn't it? You've been adopted. Remember how much is that doggy in the window? Remember all of that? Hallelujah. He shows us, shows to adopt us as sons. And that's what this is all about. So that's enough for tonight. I'm just going to finish off saying the only blessing and then we just don't want to carry on we can. Not going to say goodnight. Father, thank you, Lord, for that. We've got to start our last week's start. Help everyone here, those who will watch. Father, help this to really become so important to us, Lord. That's our fresh start, Lord. You know, I pray tonight, Lord, that we people who will be restored to their first love. Yes. Like, you know what David said in Psalm 51? Restore to me the joy of your salvation, Lord. Oh, we knew a right spirit within me, creating me a clean, pure heart. Don't cast me away from your presence, Lord. Don't take the Holy Spirit from me. But restore to me the joy of your salvation. Let this be a renewal, Father. A new start in memory of yours, Lord. Your way of promises will take us from glory to glory. We'll read about that next week. So, the ironic blessing is. Well, Moses told, God told, told Moses, Moses told them, bless the children of Israel in this way, and put his name on them. Yivarecha, Yehovah, Vaishwarecha, Yehovah, Panabalecha, Echurecha, Yisai, Yehovah, Panabalecha, Yisemecha, Shalom. And in English, that is Yehovah, who was, who is, and who is to come. Bless you and keep you. Yehovah, make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you, like Yochanan. Ha ha, we got Yehovah, let us up his countenance upon you and give you shalom, real biblical shalom, wholeness and peace and contentment and fulfillment. Oh, Yeshua's name. Thanks everyone. God bless you. Amen.